What's going on eaters and feeders? More importantly, why am I driving around with 10 grand cash? This isn't my money. I'm gonna explain that and a whole lot of other stuff in this video. We're gonna get right into it. Hit the subscribes, hit the alerts. If you're watching a video on how to start a meal prep business, which you're doing right now, you're probably interested in the other videos that I put out every single week. Subscribe, hit the alerts, check out the links below. I've got a form that you can contact me through. We've got a form if you're interested in supplying some bags. And then we also have a private Facebook group. Private Facebook group is awesome because since I don't have a thousand followers on subscribers, since I don't have a thousand subscribers on YouTube, I can't go live yet, but I am able to do live video on the Facebook group. So definitely join that as well. There's a lot of great interactions and information from people at all sorts of different levels in the game. And the community has been super supportive so far. Very proud of them. If you're one of those members, Kudos to you. If not, better join. Let's get right into it. Welcome to our channel where we go behind the scenes of our meal plan company, Fit Food Fresh, and other local businesses across South Florida. Make sure you hit the subscribe and alerts so you never miss a video. And hit us with any questions or suggestions. So I just left my good friend and I had to, for the second time in a year, borrow 10 grand from him. Uh, the last time was because we had a crazy, crazy catastrophe about this time of year, honestly. I think it was almost a year ago, exactly. And we had this uh, crazy catastrophe with our merchants and switching bank accounts and all these other issues. Um, back then, the issue was uh, I've had a previous business that was uh, basically when I left the business, there were a whole bunch of issues and I was blacklisted. So we switched from, at this time again, this was a year ago and it was right around the holidays, which is why I remember it being such a pain. Um, but we were switching from Chase to Wells Fargo and we had an issue. I had an issue with Wells Fargo. Uh, my business partner also had a salon that he had just started at the time. He still has the salon, but he just started it. So we set up all these accounts with Wells Fargo, we were with them for a week, and then they basically uh, told us that it was gonna be shut down that day because of me, because of my history with the bank. Um, I guess they didn't check it when they set us up with the account, which I would have rather have gotten to know at that point, rather than when all of our merchant processing and billing and everything was just switched over. We spent that first week going, okay, what's everything that comes out of our Chase account? Let's make sure that you know, all the bills are reconciled for Chase. Let's make sure all of the payments are transferred over. We wanted to make sure everything was, all the I's were dotted and the T's were crossed. So after a week of doing that, we find out that Wells Fargo didn't want to do any business with us because of me. Create a whole catastrophe. So then we also had to switch our merchant while having money basically, and it was like on our biggest revenue day. So in midair, imagine this money is leaving your clients and your website, and before it hits your bank account, that bank account decides to close down. So it was a pain to get the money from Wells Fargo. They were saying that they were gonna mail us a check after 11 days or something. So we basically had probably around $20,000 in limbo. And that was the first time I had to call and borrow 10 grand. I can't thank him enough for helping us that first time. Now we're doing it again. Um, and I know this is something that probably no entrepreneurs, a lot of guys, if they had a stack of money, they'd be telling you it's theirs, even though it's probably going to a meat vendor or something like that. I've seen a lot of guys take pictures uh, of meal prep guys, and you know who you are, who uh, they'll go to pay their vendor and they'll just take a, a you know Instagram story or a Snapchat of the stack, and they don't claim it to be for anything, but you know, it's just that shocking picture of a bunch of money and you're assuming that's all, it's play money. A lot of times it's bills. Well, this is actually debt. I just took on a $10,000 debt um, because of an amazing friend. We're gonna pay him back in the next two weeks, um, but we have to cover some realistic bills. Why are we in it this time? Well, we just got out of December. This is our first full week back on a normal week where there's no New Year's and all this other stuff. People are finally starting to get back on the program. Uh, we have all the holiday travelers. We have some people who've been off since thanks, before Thanksgiving, and now they're coming back. But you can imagine how much of a loss we took for December, all the revenue and everything else, plus you know the Hell Week debacle. We really probably didn't end up making any extra money, just a whole lot of headache and, um, 
in any case, check out those videos, different subject. But yeah, we're very tight on funds temporarily. Now the money that's coming in, the orders coming in, that'll definitely help us out. But uh, we're we owe rent. Um, we owe, you know, we got payroll coming out today. And basically the calendar, the financial calendar is just lining up to screw us over. We had some um, credit extended to us by our vendors who know that our industry, unlike the restaurants who are paying off all of their debts in December and November because they're so busy, they know our business is actually, um, they're familiar with what happens and they know everyone travels. So they were willing to extend us some uh, lines of credit and let us slow pay some bills, but that stuff's coming due, where it's like, okay, December's over. People are thinking like, December's bad for you. Okay, I understand. January 1st, turn. it's like a light switch. Everything's good for you, right? It's not like that. We're not a, a gym where on December 1st, people are beating down our door. We had members who are already believing in the efficacy of being on the meal plan program. So these aren't even new people. We already had existing members who are like, eh, I'll start the week of the 6th. Like nobody's rushing to start their meal plan for the resolution. Cause really, if you're serious, you should have had food for the week of the first, right? If you're really serious, you wouldn't have been waiting for a resolution. You would have been doing this stuff whenever you decided to, not waiting until some silly day on the calendar to start it. But in any case, yeah, things don't flip on as soon as everybody thinks. So they're expecting money. And um, like I said, we just came up short, about 10 grand short with uh, all of our financial obligations. Now we should be good. We've got our new software, our uh, developer promised us it's gonna be done by Sunday. Every time he does it, it really sounds so genuine and true that I wanna believe it, but I've also been doing this way too long to believe it until I see it. This project, as I've mentioned in other videos, is actually it was actually due June 2nd of 2019. It is now January 7th of 2020. So it is significantly behind. I've heard a lot of any day now, should be Friday, probably tomorrow, should be Friday, any day now. So hearing Sunday really doesn't get me too excited, but I do feel like we're closer than ever. We were having some great discussions on reevaluating our process and a lot of the ways that we do different things. The new chef is tightening up the kitchen. So I have all of these reasons to believe that this will be the best year for Fit Food Fresh, aside from these hurdles that are thrown at us. And it's just part of the business. I'm not sure why I wanted to make this video other than for the f sake of transparency and just to show you guys that there might be some lessons that you'll continue to learn, things that you think that you'll be beyond as you grow I mean, we've got hundreds of members ordering every week. A lot of you who are smaller would probably think that we're way beyond any kind of financial issues, right? Like we should be making, especially if you're able to be profitable at a smaller level, we should be you know, rolling in it. I should be driving a Lamborghini, right? Not the case. Because as you grow, and I've mentioned this in, in other videos talking about scale, as you grow, you have to do things to combat the natural attrition levels, whether it's hiring more customer service, which is gonna be a significant chunk, hiring a more skilled chef, like we just did, hiring more people, getting a bigger place, investing in more equipment, not so much the equipment, because the equipment's a one-time expense. There's these different plateaus of profit where you can be making a lot of money and you actually grow the company and have more bills, more overhead that you're gonna to have to incur and you end up coming away with less profit. Doing more work, moving more meals, it's counterintuitive, but you've gotta think about all of the different things that are gonna change between where you are and where you wanna be. All the added expenses. Your referrals might grow your company to 50, 100, several hundred members. We grew ours to several hundred members just based on referrals, word of mouth, and some very limited grassroots kind of promotion like doing an event at a gym or an office. Aside from that, we didn't really have any marketing budget that's been outlaid, and that's been great. But if we want to be on a national level, not to say that we do, but if we want to be on a national level, we're going to have to start a national marketing campaign. 
which can't really be done with grassroots because I don't have people to show up for an event in Atlanta, you know? So, and if I did, I'd have to put those people on salary. I'd have to go through training. All these added expenses are very, very expensive, especially when you're just getting into that growth spurt. Okay, I wanna go from 500 to 1,000. Here's the staff and the equipment and the marketing that I have to spend my money on before I get money coming in. When does that start paying for itself? Let's say you're profitable at 500 and these are just random numbers. It's dependent upon your staff, the variables of your meals and items and ingredients, how many items you have on the menu, whether you freeze it or ship it fresh, all sorts of things. So let's just say you're profitable at 500. You might not be profitable again until you're at 750 because you have to invest in a larger staff, you had to knock down the wall and take the suite next to you and expand your kitchen, outlay all that money. Uh, you might, you know, now you're paying for rent in that additional suite or you had to get into a bigger uh, facility all together and move. You're marketing way more aggressively. You've got more customer service on staff and they're not directly influencing the revenue. I can't just flip on the flow of clients and revenue to cover all that stuff, right? Then there's a danger. You're probably thinking, well, I'll just grow to that 750 level without adding those expenses first. You might be able to do that. You might be able to strategically add like, okay, let's do this piece of equipment and this person. But a lot of times when you're small, there's like this binary flip where it's like you can't have someone come in part-time and gradually work more, right? There's not a lot of people who are like, yeah, I'm available for 10 hours a week now and I'll patiently wait until you work me into 40 hours a week when you need me, right? That's not realistic. So there's that immediate expense that comes on. If you have too many clients and you don't have enough customer service agents, you're not gonna be able to deliver the same level of service. And you might be holding off on hiring that additional person even though you think you need them just because you don't have enough to give them full time and to justify that. So if you're doing that hypothetical scenario that we mentioned before, 500 to 700, being profitable at 700 or 750, if you try climbing up without what you need, you might actually incur some headaches that are gonna be detrimental to the overall business, and especially your reputation. If you don't have enough customer service agents to adequately handle your clients and call them back on time, or pick up their call the first time, or whatever they need because it's such a intangible, subjective part of the business, if you don't have that, you might be losing people faster, you might be burning your reputation, and who knows what else might be happening because you're trying to grow on a shoestring budget. All right, I'm pulling up on Fit Food Fresh, so I'm gonna wrap it up there. I think I went over a lot of things all over the place, and I hope you guys can pull something from it. If you haven't done so already, subscribe, alerts, check out the links below, reach out to me, join that damn Facebook group, why don't you? And have yourself an awesome day.